Hello everybody, welcome back to Total OS today. I hope everyone is having a terrific week so far and I hope you are enjoying or possibly will begin to enjoy the live Total OS Today shows uh, every Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, New York Time here in the States on the terrific Linux Distro Community .com. The live Total OS Today show is a podcast that is recorded live. You are welcome no matter what uh, type of computer user you are, whether it's uh, you know Windows PC, Linux, Mac, Android, it doesn't matter. All are welcome to join in and listen in on the show. And who knows, you might even be picked to be a guest on the show and talk to us on the podcast as it is being recorded live. So that's the live Total OS Today show every Sunday night, 9 p.m. usually. And the show is usually also co-hosted by my friend Spatry from Spatry's Cup of Linux. But for this tutorial, let's see. Let's suppose your Windows 7 PC is infected with the nasties. You've got viruses, you've got spyware, and your computer is running really, really slow. And you need to get to a folder or file right now. Your Windows PC is slow. You don't have the patience or the time to clean it out and you need to get to a folder right now. What can you do? Well, if you do what I do and I dual boot all of my computers with Windows and Linux, one of the perks, one of the features of a dual booting computer is the ability to access your Windows files or folders even if they are, uh, even if they are infected and transfer that file or folder to your Linux desktop. So how do you do that? Well, I'm running a dual boot system here, Ubuntu 12.04, and I've, ins I've installed the GNOME Shell desktop environment, GNOME 3 Shell. So, let's say I need to access a specific folder. I have my home folder here. To the left, I have devices. Here, I have system reserve. And 275 gigabyte file system. This is what I allotted uh, to the Linux side of the hard drive when I installed my Ubuntu 12.04 alongside Windows 7. Let's see I need to access a specific folder. Let's go to documents and settings, oh my PC. Now let's say I need to for the sake of time let's see I need to access my contacts right now. This is my backup folder of all my contacts that I need to uh, reinstall back into my cell phone for example. Now I know the file is infected but I need to get to some friends some contacts right now. What can I do? Highlight the folder, right click, copy to desktop. So right here now I have a copy of the folder. Let me get out of this. Now hopefully I can still click that, double click that and get to my you know friends names and contacts and copy down what I need to copy down even though the folder is infected because theoretically the virus was written for Windows PC not a Linux PC so it shouldn't affect your Linux operating system or your Linux desktop. Now once I've done this what I would suggest is after you've you know copied any folder or file to your desktop here transfer these folders or files to a USB stick if you have another computer like I do, insert that USB stick into your other Windows PC, run a virus scanner cleaner to the infected folder, and hopefully you will be able to save these contacts, quarantine, and delete the infected files in your contacts folder and save this. Now once this is done, you can obviously go back to your Windows 7 PC that is infected, clean it out, or just reinstall the operating system. If you have a backup, start off fresh and reinstall or transfer the contacts folder.
to your Windows PC knowing that you have already backed this up on Linux, written down what you needed to write down, and this is now a clean folder. Now, I, I've been, you know, it's for, for me so far running Windows 7 with the proper safety precautions. I've never had a virus infect my Windows PC to the point where it's not usable but it can happen and if it's ha if it's happened to you and you are dual booting this is a safe and effective way to transfer a virus infected folder or file to your Linux desktop and hopefully be able to access it without any issues that's it that's this is how I would do it Hopefully this will help you out in the future if it ever happens and you should be running a virus shield on your Windows 7 PC 24-7. No excuse not to have that kind of protection. Well that's it. That's it for this tutorial. I hope this helps you out. Share it with your friends uh, at least in the hopes of potentially avoiding any issues in the future. And as always I will catch you guys sometime in the future. As always, ciao.